Thank you. Welcome to Story Times. This is a whole lot of fun. I just had uh, somebody say to me that this must be so different for you now that you're used to playing in front of 20,000 people. And uh, for some strange reason, I almost find 250 almost more intimidating. <laughs> in a good way, though. Don't feel bad. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of like being in my own living room, although I'm terribly jealous about some of these lamps. I want to take them home with me. <clears throat> So this next song is uh, called Building a Mystery. I actually wrote it with, with my producer. Thank you. And it was one of those few songs that uh, I love because it came out very quickly and easily. And basically it's about um, the fact that we all wear masks at some point in our lives. We all have insecurities that we want to hide. And often we, we try and hide them by, you know, putting on a facade that appears to be more interesting to people than when unfortunately if we would just be who we are that's usually quite a more attractive and beautiful thing so this is sort of about that <clears throat> Come out at night That's when the energy comes And the dark sides light And the vampires roar you Stretch your ass to wear And your suicide ball And a cross from a faith that died Before Jesus came Sleep with voodoo dolls And you won't give up the search For the ghosts in the hall You wear sandals in the snow And a smile won't wash away Can you look out the window Without your shadow getting in the way You're so
Thanks very much. Did you write another question on the card? Shit, what did I do with those? I think I left them. They said, can you handle this? Can you handle taking those cards from the dressing room onto stage? Can you deal with that? Other people have people doing those things for them. I said, no, it's no problem. I can handle that. <laughs> Obviously, I can't. I think some nice person, oh yes, there's some nice person going to get them for me, so. Well, we can begin. Um, Who were your influences while you were? While I was growing up? Yeah. Um, I had actually very few. Cat Stevens, Simon and Garfunkel, Joan Baez, I was four, and I wanted to be Joan Baez, so my mother got me a ukulele, <laughs> because I was too small for a guitar, and I started taking lessons from Mrs. Pulsiver up the street, and, uh, and yeah, that, and uh, who else, let's see. Well, you know, and of course, my br when my brothers entered puberty, there was all the, the latest heavy metal and, uh, and sort of punk rock that was coming out at the time, but I just kind of shut my ears off to most of it and kept and stayed in my room and looked at my Cat Stevens double record. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess when I, when I hit about um, 16, I discovered Peter Gabriel and Kate Bush around the same time. <laughs> and, it, I, and that was another, actually, that was another epiphany. Um, when I heard his music, um, I always knew that I, you know I loved music, and um, there was something, something out there that I knew I could be a part of. And when I heard his music, it really shocked me, just because it was so beautiful and so poignant, and so honest, and uh, it just it hit such a strong chord. Me, I thought that's what I want to do. Actually, when I started doing my first record, I stopped listening to all music just because I realized I was far too much influenced by everybody else and e even though I still had a lot of residuals you know I could listen to the first record now and go I was listening to a lot of Kate Bush <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know what the deal is in this situation but when I play a live live show um, the next song I do is kind of probably the only sing-along kind of song that I have in my repertoire so I like to get the audience involved if they're interested and you even have microphones so uh, if you guys want to help us sing this one, that would be excellent. <coughs> oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your love's better than ice cream, better than anything else that I've tried. Your love.
Thank you. It's very good singing. Um, of course, every song does have a story. Sweet Surrender was a very long, took a very long time to write. Um, I sort of, the initial inspiration came actually after seeing Leaving Las Vegas, which I found to be, you know, this, this is beautiful and tragic love story. Of these two people who were rather pathetic, both in their own rights, and yet completely accepted each other for who they were, all the beautiful things and all the ugly things. And um, so, yeah, that's a lot to do with what this is about, accepting ugly things and, and being able to appreciate the fact that, that someone can love you for all those nasty things, especially when you think you are completely unlovable. It's a great comfort in that.
Thank you very much. Yes, I turned the big 3-0 yesterday. That's awesome. And uh, my husband, who is my drummer, Ash. He was very cheeky. For two months, he hid a big surprise party. And it wasn't just a surprise party. My mother and father secretly flew out from Halifax, Nova Scotia <laughs> by my husband. And my mother said to me, you have to wonder about a man who can deceive you so cleverly for two months. <laughs> it's okay, I trust him. This is a song, basically, um, another one of those few and rare occasions when the song came out very quickly and easily. It was from pure emotion. Um, I was watching a, uh, a documentary called A Promise Kept. It was made in Canada. It was about this woman who uh, discovered her fiancé was HIV positive, and basically the story followed her and her husband. They got married, um, and he got progressively sicker and she took care of him right up into the end and she was telling the story with just such you know beautiful clarity and honesty and uh, it just it struck home in, in a way that I, I couldn't really describe except by writing this song and I really feel like it's uh, sort of a something that came out of me through her it's called Hold On <laughs>
Well, we have a very, very special guest who's going to come and help us sing this next song. It's a real pleasure for me to introduce Paula Cole. So I thought this song was especially fitting to help have Paula help us come and sing because it's sort of about the trappings of, of youth and, and adolescence and not really knowing who you are and struggling to find your own identity within your parents' home, within society. And, uh, it, and I've read about that a few goddamn times, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, therefore it seemed fitting. <laughs> So this is called Elsewhere. I love the time and in between The calm inside me In the space where I can breathe I believe there is a distance I wander To touch upon is a reaching out and reaching in holding out holding I believe this is heaven to no one else but me and I'll defend it For the day to break free The more that clings like desperation
Thanks, Sarah, for having me. Thank you, Paula Cole. Um, it's an, another kind of tough one to talk about. It's a bit of a, a touchy subject, and, and it's basically me having a bit of a problem dealing with fame and dealing with a lot of the, the things that come with that. I was getting a lot of letters from fans that, you know, 99% of them were incredible, wonderful letters, and there was that small percentage that kind of crossed the line, crossed that boundary of, of being sane. And... Uh, for lack of a better word. And they were actually, they were quite disturbing, and I didn't know how to deal with it because, you know, I feel like, um, and I still feel like a very ordinary person with perhaps a very extraordinary job. I am the same person I was 10 years ago, although I, I think I've, I've progressed in certain ways, but it, it just seemed very strange, and I had, it took me a while to realize that, um, you know, the whole celebrity thing has really nothing to do with me. It has to do with other people's perceptions of me. And a couple letters were stating that we had to, you know, we were, should be together and uh, kind of nothing was going to stand between that happening. And it was a bit disturbing. And so I wrote, I wrote the song Possession, sort of um, for me trying to get into their shoes, trying to get into their head and trying to understand where they're, where they're coming from. And you know, we've all been obsessed before to a greater or lesser degree. Um, <laughs> you know, it's borders on psychotic, definitely at times, I know I have, but um, this was sort of my way of finding a place to put it where I could deal with it and it wouldn't frighten me. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
It's morning that I dread Another day I'm knowing of The path I fear to tread Oh, I want you to see Thank you. I'm not quite sure how to explain this one, but uh, I guess more than anything, it's about my problems in dealing with feeling responsible for everybody else. Lady, I do believe I failed you. Lady, I know I've let you Don't you know I tried so hard to love you in my way? It's easy letting go.
Thank you very much. Thanks so much for listening.
Thank you. Actually, a number of the songs that uh, we've played tonight have been ones that, well, it's kind of run the gamut. Some have come out really simply and quickly, and others have been incredibly difficult to write. And this next one was, again, very simple. It came out in a matter of three or four hours. Um, very easy labor. <laughs> and, uh, it's, I, was, I was reading a Rolling Stone article about um, heroin in the music industry and how many musicians had OD'd on it. And um, they were discussing, I think, uh, the keyboard player for uh, Smashing Pumpkins. And just the, the something about it, it, other than the obvious, it, it affected me very deeply. And uh, I sort of empathize greatly with the place that musicians get to where they're on the road for so long and it can be a very lonely place even though you're surrounded by people who you love um, you know you see so many hotel rooms and and everything starts to become very much the same yet there's nothing constant and a lot of the times you know we have tons of different methods of escapism because uh, when, when things become just too much to bear and some people read a good book some people take a bath some people shoot smack and uh, there's there are many in between things and it's it's such a terrible terrible waste of a life and um, but it, I could really it made me remember the place I wrote the song thinking about him and thinking about the situation yet I realized very quickly that it was it was me in the song I've been in that position where I've been incredibly lonely and and messed up and just give me some distraction give me anything to take me out of the place I'm in now and uh, so this is called Angel. This is for all those lost souls out there, myself included at times. <laughs> <laughs> 